G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, let's get right into it. Posted by user Neshtim, titled, I, 25 male, went to serve in the military for one month, and came back to find my girlfriend, 24 female, had changed. Hello Reddit, my girlfriend and I have been dating for two years. I was planning to propose in the next three months, and I was extremely sure that she was going to say yes, as we've been planning our lives together. She was hinting that I should propose by sending me cheeky proposal posts, signaling that she wants an engagement ring on her finger, and she sometimes would say, when we get married, yada yada yada. We live together. Admittedly, we started fast and we rushed into things. We started living together a month into our relationship. We have been living together ever since. She was always so loving with me. This is the best relationship I've ever had. She always made me feel loved, cared for, and even if she's somewhat selfish by nature, she always puts me first. And she loves me very much, and I love her very much. I have been the perfect boyfriend. I keep on taking her on dates, giving her gifts, helping her around the house, solving her problems, and giving her affection and care. We never fought, not even once. But then, things changed. I had to go and serve in the military for a month. She dropped me off to the bus station, kissed me, hugged me, cried, said that she loves me and would miss me a lot, etc. While I was in the military, she sent me texts saying how much she misses me and she called me frequently, speaking in a loving manner. After about four days though, this stopped. During the month, we barely spoke and only when I called, She'd only sent me around 20 texts. When I came back, she came to welcome me. She was very distant. She didn't even seem happy that I was back. Everything felt off about her. We went back to our home and I asked what was wrong and why she was acting this way. We spoke about it for hours and she said that during my absence, she realized that she had too much love and wanted to cool off a bit. She said we rushed into things and she wants me to move out, as she was not ready for this kind of life where we live together. She said that she wanted to live a little and not do everything together. She wanted to go on dates with me and experience the things we haven't experienced because we immediately moved in together. She wants to go out and have fun on her own too, and she wants the space for herself. She's studying medicine and she's in her last year and wants to focus more on that too. I said okay. I'll move out, but I don't feel like this explains her being so distant. I asked if there was somebody else and she said no. She said that she only wants to live her life like a 24 year old and not like a 30 year old. I don't keep her from dressing the way she wants or I don't get jealous when she goes out with friends, but I understand that me being there 24 seven can make her feel burnt out. She said she loves me and wants to keep working on the relationship and everything will be better for us this way. But I feel kind of icky about this. I feel like our relationship is dying. Everything changed so fast, and she doesn't even say I love you back when I say it. I feel like there's a distance between us all the time. I got a house and I'm moving out tomorrow. I cancelled my plans to propose, and I'm ready to take it slow like she wants to. I feel like this can break us though. Can our relationship survive this? Why can this happen? What's the outlook? For some context, OP lives in Turkey, normally military service is 6 months, but there's a law passed in 2019 that allowed for 1 month service with a payment of around 1130 USD. In the comments, Lying Tattooist says, Whether there's someone else or not, she's making it clear that she doesn't want to be with you. She's trying to be nice about it by saying you can all still work on it. Take the hints, move out and move on. It sucks for a two-year relationship to end, but life goes on, and I promise you will meet someone else even better at some point. It's better to end things in two years instead of being in an unhappy relationship for ten years. The thing I've never liked about doing it that way is it's not a nice way to go about it. It really comes across as they're leading you on, when although you don't have to be blunt about it, you could be upfront and just say it without ambiguity. You went away, and she got a taste of life on her own, and liked it. It doesn't have to be something sinister with someone else, it could just as easily be this. I don't think she liked it, she probably found it really hard to be alone, and realized she'd lost some of her previous independence. 
In a couple, you often hand off tasks to your significant other, and once they're gone, you'll find out that you have no idea how to pick a good TV show, do laundry, pay your bills, fix the car. She wants to reclaim her life, her independence. It's something the media tells us that we must be, strong, independent women and men. In reality, we live in an interdependent world, and she needs to accept that that is okay. Update. First of all, thank you for your thoughtful comments. It meant a lot to me to see you coming to my support and providing valuable insights. She said, I love you, I'm prompted the evening of the day that I made this post. I thought this was a good sign and started up a conversation about our relationship. It was a really good talk. She was honest and I could feel it. I'll be honest with you too. To address the obvious thought that everyone had, I thought she could have cheated as well, but nothing like that happened. She's made it clear that she didn't cheat in a respectable, clear way and tone, and I'm convinced that she didn't. I trust this without any doubts now. Although all those comments about Jody made me laugh, I needed a good laugh. This being a soft breakup was my other concern. I asked her if she considered breaking up with me, and she said the thought came into her mind, but she didn't want to, as she loves me and was sure that she would love the future that we will have. She didn't want a life without me. I asked if me moving out will eventually lead to a breakup, and she said she doesn't think it will, that she thinks it'll only make us stronger. The problem was, as it turns out, that I went from being a happy person to someone who was worrying and depressed. She only realized that this was the case when I was gone, and I wasn't around to spread negativity anymore. She said that she fell in love with me because I was happy and eccentric. She mentioned that yes, while I was doing things that a good boyfriend would do, she felt that I was only doing them out of duty and that I used to be very excited about buying her flowers. But lately when I came home with flowers, I didn't celebrate this small occasion with her. I just gave them to her and then went to bed. I admit, I have been very sulky the past few months. I was always worrying about my career, finances, and not being able to accomplish my future goals. I'd already realized this while I was serving and worked through it myself. I think I'm in a better place now and she says she saw that I am. Her solution to this was me moving out. My negative energy, and I wasn't aware it was so contagious, wouldn't affect her anymore. Because it did. And she already has a lot to worry about. She needs a positive attitude to stay strong, and I was making that harder. She also realized that we were too codependent and too much in a routine. She thought me moving out would solve this also. I agree. We both were very independent people at the start, but then we got lost in love. I was always waiting for her to come home, and she was always waiting for me to do anything. This ordeal made life somehow stale. She realized that because I did so much for her, she became heavily dependent on me to solve her problems, making her feel weak and incapable. Because of this reliance, she even had a hard time paying the bills, and this got to her. She missed her old self, the one with confidence and power. I realized that I lost myself too. I was a social person who commonly took the initiative to do something, with a lot of flash and crash in my life. I lost that. I lost friends, and I lost my active lifestyle. She wants to go out with friends and not include me and everything. She wants to not worry about the things she says while with friends because I might be uncomfortable with it. She wants to sometimes take long walks alone. She doesn't want to ask me every time she wants to buy something. She doesn't want to feel guilty when her day-to-day -day plans don't include me. A problem that some of you may have big issues with. She admitted that she received flirtatious male attention when doing her internship at school. I wasn't surprised as she is very good looking and with a very feminine personality to boot. She says she would never cheat on me and didn't want to respond to anything, never considered anyone else but me in her life, but she liked it. She enjoyed the ego boost and that made her feel guilty. Guilty that she could like such a thing while I was facing hardship. I said it was normal to like attention from the opposite sex, especially when you're lonely. I appreciate that she immediately tried to shut down advances and stayed committed and loyal to me. I don't think this will be a problem, and she looked very relieved when I thought that it wasn't a big deal. In the end, she said that she missed the old me, 
the one that was happy and excited about the little things. She said she loves me very much, and she's ready to continue the relationship we had before if I could get away from my sulky self finally. She tried to make me happy, but I was feeling bad for too long. Me regaining myself meant us regaining the amazing relationship we had. Us shedding away our codependence meant us having a stronger, more stable future when nothing like this happens again. After the talk, everything changed for the better. She looked so relieved, and I gave her my word that I will not try to fall into this situation again. She hugged and kissed me, and gave me a gift that she bought for me while I was away. I then took her out to a nice place to drink and celebrate afterwards. I felt happy and unencumbered for the first time in a long time. We had an amazing time and discussed many things. We came back home to have the most intimate and amazing sex we had had since the beginning of our relationship and stayed up all night cuddling and listening to music. So, things are looking good for us right now. I thank all of you again for your support, and especially the longer messages that were speaking from experience really helped me. I am very happy that we got over this, and I'm very excited about the future. Thanks again, Reddit. In the comments, xdem112 says, Not at all the positive update that you seem to think it is. So you've been going through a slightly tough time, and you are no longer 100% outgoing or positive. So she wants independence that she could so easily incredibly curate for herself while being in a relationship. So she ignored you for an entire month without one single prior discussion about her feelings. That doesn't bode well at all for a life with this person. Life is gnarly. It throws some nasty curveballs, and she has proved that she is not mentally prepared to support a romantic partner through the tough times at this point. You are far too trusting, and she is out of touch with herself at best. You don't move out your long-term partner, enjoy the intention of others, and admit that you want to hang out with friends without thinking about what you're saying, i.e. respecting your partner because you want to work on your relationship. You both are just drawing out your breakup pretty clearly. She just wants to be single. I just hope that she has the integrity to end things if she comes to that realization herself instead of jerking you around or becoming manipulative. This really bothers me. I'm glad you both worked it out, but I hate the way that she treated you. Instead of talking to you, she became cold and distant. That's awful. Instead of being there to support your emotional issues about your concerns of your life, she asked you to move out. That's awful. Instead of just saying, let's hang out without each other and with our own respective friends, she asked you to move out. The better solution is to just do those things that she is bothered by. There is no reason that she can't go out with her friends without you. There is no reason she can't just pay a bill. Reading this made me think that the thing you both need is couples therapy. Maybe even individual therapy could be good for you both. OP replies, maybe if it comes to that, I'll be open to therapy. I know her solution sucks and there are other ways to go by solving this, but will it comfort her the same? She wants this and this is the solution she thinks will work. If this doesn't work, I have no blame. If I insist on another solution and it doesn't work, she'll be thinking, well maybe if we tried my solution? I'm playing ball. Worst case scenario, I'll already have a house to go back to. Most importantly, these are her wishes, and I respect them. If one day my wishes arise, she will respect them too. You're right in your way of thinking, and I'll not forget the way that she became distant during my time in the military, but I've already forgiven her. Our relationship was more than this ordeal, and she has been more than supportive in the past. I can see how it's not positive, but at the moment, I think I'll ride this, I'll be prepared if it doesn't seem to work out, but currently we're okay and I love her, that is reason enough. People are saying that she'll cheat on me and she wants to live the single life, but I don't think so. I was supposed to move out today, but she asked me to stay. Of course, you're right, she didn't support me during a time where I needed support the most, but I can see her perspective. When I did go through a tough time, she was with me. She did support me then. She really made an effort, which is why I can understand she could be tired of the whole thing when I was away. If we do break up, that's fine. I'm a young man, and I can handle some heartbreak if it comes my way in the future. No reason to abandon someone you love just to avoid that. If we don't, that's amazing. 
but I want to work on this. And as long as she does too, hopefully we'll end up building a better relationship for the both of us. I don't get why you're getting downvoted for this. It's a mature way of looking at the situation. Literally all relationships are a kind of work and maintenance, and it only falls through if one of you stops doing the work. If you don't want to be the one stopping the work and ending it, that's your choice. You can't control other people, so they might stop doing the work down the road, just like anyone, and it sounds like you understand that. Kudos. And OP says... It's because I didn't just break up, and I decided to try to stay and fix things at my expense if necessary. It's a commendable notion that I would think, but apparently people don't like it. Thanks for your input. Man, Reddit needs to get off its one narrative train. It's super easy to slot this into place, but it's not exactly helping the OP. The actual situation is described. Guy has been getting more down over time, relationship was getting a bit codependent. Girlfriend didn't realize this until he was away, thought they should take a step back since they moved in together after a month. He feels worried because she withdrew while he was doing military training, which he had no choice in. Understandable. Meanwhile, she's starting something incredibly stressful at the same time, has had a patient die, wants to get a fresh start with their relationship since they rushed it in the beginning. This is a very realistic scenario, and yeah, being that they're so young and struggling a bit, they might break up. That might be because people being attracted to her makes her realize it's not working anymore. That's fine, although sad. Luckily, he's being much more level-headed than Reddit, so that's a good sign for weathering this. Yeah, that's kind of why I didn't comment on this one. I do realize on that first post I did miss quite a few comments that could have given more context to the whole situation. My apologies, but from what I'm reading here, she was doing medical training, and she had a patient die on her while she was doing said medical training. That definitely is not good for your mental health, and I didn't really want to comment on it, because I feel like I didn't have a lot of enough information from that first story. That's just a mess for me to deal with. And yeah, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's just the reality of relationships in this day and age, in life. I say good luck to you, OP, and that I'm rooting for you. That's for sure. I, I really hope things work out for you. Our next post is by user roundmacaron190, titled, I'm leaving my family. I'm typing this in a mix of fear and nerves. I'm the youngest, 22, of 5 kids, male 30, male 28, female 28 twins, and female 25. My parents are heavily religious and we live in Utah. Growing up, everything had to be done perfectly. It didn't matter if it was grades, looks, social activities, or even friends. I'm different from my siblings as I was never interested in the maths and science like they were. I've always been the writer, the painter. I remember once when I was 13, I made a painting of a dove in a snowy field and won first in the competition. I told my parents who got angry that I had wasted my time with something so worthless when I should have been using the time to study. I still had A's in every class. My mother won't even say more than a few words to me. She always seems like she hates me and I just don't understand. My father burned the painting to remind me of what was truly important before taking all of my art supplies until I showed some more responsibility with my time. It's been like this for as long as I can remember. I work full time and have since I was 15 at McDonald's, dashing every bit of money that I could. My father took half my checks as tithing to help teach me what being an adult was like. I applied to several colleges, but was told by my parents that they would not be helping me with tuition as they did for my siblings, because they thought that sending me to college would just be a waste of money. Just saying, remember what happened last time when we didn't send a particular man to art school? Just putting that one out there, guys. So I got angry. I am so tired of being the black sheep just because I like the arts more than maths and science. And then, I heard them talking when I got up in the middle of the night about the perfect man they'd found who was willing to take me in. Through our church. I'm terrified, and so I'm leaving. I've got some money saved up, a good amount, and I'm leaving the country. I found a job that lets me work remote doing freelance design work, and I've had my passport since I was a kid because our family vacations overseas. 
I'm taking nothing other than a change of clothes, my laptop, and important documents I took out of my father's office. I booked a flight that leaves in 5 hours, and I'm never coming back. I'm not even going to take my phone since I'd need to get a new number anyway. My best friend, God bless her, had been the one booking things and getting everything ready since I couldn't tip off my parents. She also smuggled some of my more important things that I can't take to hold onto for me. She's parking down the street, and I'll leave with my smallest suitcase to meet her. I don't know how they'll take this, I'm terrified they'll find a way to drag me back, or to track me down. They went to bed over an hour ago, but I'm too anxious to sleep. I don't know if I'll have any updates, but I just hope they don't stop me. Update 2. I've left my family. Wow, so much has been happening lately that it's kept my head on a swivel constantly. I'll start with the good part of the update before moving on to the less happy bits. So, I was advised to remove the location destination from my post, so all I will say is that I'm in South Africa right now, and it's amazing. The food is astonishing, and a poster here messaged me to recommend that I try bunny chow, which is actually authentic curry in a bread bowl. It was phenomenal. I got to chatting to one of the hotel staff, she's about my age, and we really hit it off. She went with me to a local shopping centre to get some new and better clothes. At least I'm used to wearing dresses, so that doesn't faze me, and they're very lightweight and breathable, unlike a lot of US dress fabrics. She also told me to shake out my shoes every morning just in case. I've started apartment hunting, and it's well within my budget, like super low compared to how sky high it is in the US. It's honestly jaw-dropping, like $81 for a studio apartment with a loft and kitchenette. So yeah, housing won't be an issue, and it's a bit odd to be house shopping for myself when I've always lived with my parents. Now on to the less pleasant bits. I finally opened the emails, deciding that it was best to probably get it over with. My father's email was filled with anger. There's no other way to put it. He said that by taking off irresponsibly like I did, cost them the friendship of someone they'd planned on introducing to me. He never admitted that it was a 53-year-old that they had basically sold me to. Father stated that because of the social relationships that have been damaged and impacted by my actions, I owe them approximately $85,000 in reparations. He also claims that he will be taking me to court if I don't pay it in full within 30 days and return home, as I obviously cannot be trusted. I plan to ignore that, as I believe him to be bluffing. He ended his email slash rant with, You belong to me, and I won't tolerate such defiance when we've put a roof over your head and taken care of you for your entire life. You were never the child we expected. It's time you make up for your deficiencies. I expect you home within the next two weeks. Yeah, nah. My siblings were basically copies of my father's email, admonishing me for throwing the efforts of our parents in their faces before running off like a coward, unwilling to face the fallout of my actions. I just skimmed them, honestly, before just deleting them. It's nothing that I didn't expect. However, my sister-in-law, she's married to my eldest brother, sent her own email before asking me to not reply as she would be deleting every sign that she sent it from her end. She congratulated me on stepping out on my own and getting away from my parents and their demands. She said that she herself hadn't been strong-willed enough to stand up to her parents when they basically betrothed her to my brother, which makes sense as I remember that they met and then married within six months, and even then, I thought that was a bit strange. She pleaded with me not to return and not to reply. That was it. It was a bit unnerving, honestly, as I do believe her, and I'm sad that she's stuck the way she is. The last email was from my best friend. She said that the morning after I flew out, my parents had been on their doorstep demanding to see me. Apparently, they believed I was hiding with her. They refused to leave, screaming for me to stop pretending I wasn't there. It caused enough of a scene that the police were called, but they only talked to my parents briefly and let them leave. It really angered my friend, who'd wanted them arrested for threats and trespassing. The police only claimed that there wasn't a pattern of behaviour that would warrant them being arrested and charged, before just leaving. She didn't know when they realised I wasn't there at her house, but they didn't come back, thankfully. 
However, word has spread of me fleeing the safety of my parents' home and how they wanted me to return as they were concerned and fearful of what may happen with me out on the streets alone. The church ward has actually done searches of the area trying to find me. I don't know what they'll do from here, but they have no idea that I left the country, let alone the state. My friend has no plans to say anything, and neither do I. As far as I'm concerned right now, they can live with that state of wondering for the rest of eternity. I don't think I'll renounce my US citizenship, as there may come a day where I need it and it's better to be safe than sorry, but I have full plans to gain dual citizenship as soon as I'm able to. That's it for now, no other plans yet, but if anything changes, I'll let you know. I want to thank you all for your comments and private messages. It feels like I've got friends and family on my side, and I cannot tell you how much that means to me. Truly, thank you, all of you. Update 3. So much advice and support from everyone, I cannot thank you all enough. I thought with all the comments and questions I thought I'd answer here and explain what's happened since my last post. Ironically, my use of maths, instead of just math, comes from my mother who is British and met my father in England when they were 22. Second is people questioning why I chose South Africa and Johannesburg of all places because of how dangerous it can be. I do understand the risks, but there is nowhere on this planet that is inherently danger-free. Africa is massive and incredibly diverse, Finding someone would be very difficult, and because those videos got so much attention, I've left Johannesburg sadly. I'm very far away, though obviously still in Africa. The area that I'm in now is incredibly safe, and came highly recommended by several people. Settling here will be very comfortable, and the people are wonderful. I may even attend the university here and get a degree. I haven't replied to the emails, but I have saved them and printed copies and am laminating them just in case. I will not be renouncing my US citizenship, and my passport is good for another 8 years. I don't hate religion regardless of what it is. In my eyes, a person's relationship with God is incredibly personal. If a person connects with him via camping, or walks, long drives, listening to music, acts of service, that's their choice, and it's just as valid in my opinion as sitting in a pew is. Possibly more, as they're honest with themselves instead of just putting on a false facade for the public eye. I plan on ignoring any further emails from my family, other than printing them out just in case. They've also made several phone calls to my friend, who has had fun with them. The first time your father called yelling that I hand you over, I pretended to be cowed and gave him your location. It took him to a strip club. He came back screaming at how I had embarrassed him. I just hung up on him honestly. She did that each time they called, giving a different location every time. Her favorite was sending my parents to a nudist retreat. My mother passed out apparently. My friend is looking to move and eventually plans to join me, but will jump around a bit so they don't follow her to me. I did finally read my uncle's email, but it was just a copy of my father's with the added comment that he and his fellow cops would be looking for me to bring me home safe before I got myself in trouble and hurt. I'm being watchful, and I know better than to wander into dark alleyways and abandoned places. That's all I've got for now. If anything changes, I'll let you all know. It's heartwarming seeing and reading how many people are on my side and in my corner. I've actually begun printing out everyone's messages and comments to put in a binder that I can look back on later. Truly, thank you all. I mean it. On being forced to marry, even though OP is an adult, OP says... Pressure via local church wards. It is easier to move on when I don't have them standing over me, forcing their choices in place of my own. I honestly don't know if I'd be strong-willed enough to stand up to my father in person just yet. Maybe one day in the future when I know who I am outside of what I've been forced to be. Update 4 Hello everyone, it's been a while since my last update, and a few things have happened that I was told by my friend that I needed to share since everyone was still clearly rooting for me. I have settled in a bit here, and am now enjoying the fun of paperwork. Oh, so much paperwork. I've secured an apartment, and while it's two bedrooms, one is for my friend when she comes to join me. I've made a few acquaintances here locally, and am beginning to stand on my own for a bit. My biggest challenges have been dealing with feeling uncomfortable because I don't know all of the unspoken rules the way I did in the US. 
As such, I'm constantly second-guessing myself, but hopefully that will fade with time. So, family. My family has learned that I left the state. How they did, I'm not sure. They do, however, seem convinced that I'm still in the continental US. My friend works as a cartoonist, and while she doesn't make a large amount of money, she makes more than enough to live comfortably. She is getting ready to leave herself, and decided to send my parents a farewell gift. She didn't tell me about this until just a little bit ago. She spent a few hours carefully drawing my parents as they visited each location she sent them to, including their reactions, and all scenes were ended with the phrase, Abade, Abade, Abade. That's all, folks. Sadly, while I've never seen the Looney Tunes, as she named it, she said she portrayed my father as similar to a coyote. I'm still not 100% sure what that means, but she said everyone else would. Before then ordering me to watch it. Maybe one day. She should be joining me at around October 9th, after country hopping several times. All the things she hasn't sold are in a secured storage unit, including the things that she's been holding for me. The biggest... Revelation came after my father. Well, he had a meltdown apparently after I never responded to him. He got into a fight with my mother in church, and many things were said. Among those, according to several, that my mother had cheated on my father, which, well, led to me. Which is why she never liked me, I guess, as I just reminded her of her mistakes. My father took her back in spite of that, but well, there it is. It caused a big stir in the ward, and meetings were held, though I obviously don't know what was said or done. I may never know, honestly. I'm trying to move on, and am even contemplating getting a tattoo. Part of me really wants to, while another points out that if I change enough, and my father finds me, he won't want me then. That's really all for now. I'm not sure if I'll have anything else to share, but if anything happens, I'll let you all know. Thank you all for the messages and comments. I do read them all, and it means more than you'll ever know. And that's all for today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.